Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and I'm on the, the lav mic because uh, we're not on the desk and also I need to be able to do things without like the mic getting in the way, so anyway. Today, we're going to see if I can figure out where this board has the die sense uh, circuit. Well, if I, I can figure out a way to hook up to the die sense of this motherboard, so yeah. Um, this is the MSI Creator TRX40. I could technically just go ask MSI and like where where is the die sense, but uh, the thing is, um, and that would be the easier, better option for me. But the thing is, uh, I, like if you want to do this yourself, uh, I think it, this is more useful, right? Like if you wanted to figure out where your die sense is on your board. Um, well, I'd prefer it if I wasn't getting messages from people who are like, yo, Buildzoid, where do I need to measure? I don't want to bother with that stuff. So instead, I'll just show you the, the full process of this. So the DiSense voltage, voltage sensing is basically uh, a connection from the voltage controller, which we ideally you'd actually have the board completely disassembled, but I'm pretty confident we don't need to go that far. Um, and maybe if we do, then you'll never see this video anyway, so it's not an issue. But uh, yeah, so the voltage controller on this board is the corner right here, and the lighting is not working with me here, but that's mostly because I don't do pro, like, well, yeah, so there's your voltage controller, right? That chip right there, the Infineon labeled chip, so yeah, that's our voltage controller, and also I just noticed that the camera is apparently pretty low on battery, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Mostly just hook up the charger to it. Hopefully my mic doesn't run out of batteries. I'm actually, I don't know when I last replaced the batteries on this mic, so if it drops out, well, <laughs> it's going to be fun, isn't it? But that's the kind of quality content uh, people subscribe for at AHOC. <laughs> anyway, so... Let's see. So, yeah, um, there we go. So we're going to do this with the CPU installed first because actually one of the, the tricks I want to do is like, um, the, well, having the CPU installed will give us a bunch of different resistance measurements than without the CPU installed. And that'll actually give the circuit away much more easily because the way that circuit is normally built is there go there's going to be a, uh, so by the controller, there's going to be a tiny, like a very little capacitor. I can't remember the actual value of it, but there's going to be a little capacitor. And then there's going to be two wire, like two traces coming off of that capacitor. And you're going to have on, basically there's going to be voltage sense across the VR, uh, on the output of the VRM. And then there's voltage sense on the actual die of the CPU. Now, the reason why there's voltage sense on the VRM is so that if the CPU is not making proper contact with the socket, uh, you don't blow up the chip, right? Because if there was no, if the voltage controller doesn't see the output voltage, it's just going to do very stupid things. Um, so that is basically a safety mechanism. Now, normally there's like a 100 ohm resistor um, going to the actual VRM sensing. So that when you install a CPU, the CPU's die sense has no resistance on it. There's zero ohms resistance going to the actual controller. So, or it should be pretty close. It should be very low resistance. And so when you measure across, so when the CPU is installed, it basically completely, like because there's a 100 ohm resistor to the V core on the actual VRM, that voltage just like is no longer visible to the controller because there's obviously a voltage drop going th across the power plane of the board that through the socket into the CPU. So you don't actually want the VRM output voltage skewing the die sense measurement. Um, so yeah. And basically with the CPU installed, if we find the die sense circuit, we're going to measure the uh, resistance of the CPU across it. And then if we remove the CPU, we should just measure the resistance, like we should be seeing 100 or 200 ohms. I can't remember which one it is exactly right now. It also depends a bit on the implementation. Uh, <laughs> but generally it's going to be something like 100 or 200 ohms uh, resistance from V-Core to, to ground uh, because that's the, uh, you know, the, the safety die sense resistance. So, I mean, the, the safety uh, VRM sense resistance. So anyway, um, right now the CPU is installed in, in the board, so we're going to get some very low resistance measurements. 
Actually, I'm trying to figure out. No, you can you can see that just fine. Actually, if I put it in the light, yeah, you can see that just fine. So first thing worth knowing about CPUs and just chips in general, even if they're turned off, they have very low resistance. This is 0 0.426 ohms. It's less than half a ohm. That's completely fine. This is a working Threadripper. I've not killed it yet. So that is actually a correct measurement. It looks like a dead short, but that's actually like, consider this. If you put apply one volt to your CPU and then fully load it up, it's capable of pulling at like 100 plus amps. It really doesn't have much resistance when it's running. So having a lot of resistance when it's not running would be kind of like not having a ton of resistance when it's not running isn't really that different, like isn't that strange. So. Yeah, the CPU doesn't have any resistance, that's normal, so... Right, and a lazy way to figure out which side of anything is ground is to just measure against some, th like some, some, some of the anchor points in the I.O. So, if we measure from here, so that side of the, like, that capacitor leg is ground, that capacitor leg is V-core, you could also just check, flip it over and check which side's which, but... Um, I like to check across, like, th this is more convenient, once you have the board flipped over, like, right? You can't forget it if you measure it on the same side. Um, and you don't have to like think about like which orient how, how the orientation of the capacitor changes when you flip the board over, which like I, I struggle with. I struggle with things like left and right. So uh, you know somebody <laughs> like go left and I'll, I'm probably gonna turn right. And t if you tell me to go right, I'll probably still go right actually. <laughs> it's just like all directions are one direction. Um, anyway, uh, so. I've already identified something that's rather suspicious on this board uh, in terms of the, the resistance measurements. If we zoom in. Um, oh man, okay. It's not a microscope, so I can't ask too much of it, but how bad is that? That's not that bad. You can actually see stuff. Perfect. So um, basically what I've identified is these four resistors right here. These four. Um, there's not really anything that makes them super suspicious, like that would initially give them away, but um, basically I just started poking away at random and then I realized, oh, I think I already have the circuit I was looking for, um, and that's when I decided to pull out the camera. So if we measure from here to here, all right, you can't see anything. But, well, you can see what I'm where I'm measuring across, so I'm just gonna zoom out. So now you can see the multimeter and you can see that we get that same resistance as when measuring across the CPU. And so if we measure to the... Okay, so that's the ground side probably. Yeah, that's the ground side. And if we measure to here, that's the V-core side. So one side of that is connected to V-core, or at least seems to be, and one side of that seems to be attached to ground. Um, if we measure the resistance of the resistor itself, so across the re little resistor, we see that that's a 2 ohm resistor. So this is a very, very probably going to be connected straight to the CPU die. Um, and then, you know, so you're going to have 2 ohms, 2 ohms, then we have some other resistors. These seem to be 0 ohms. Right, yeah. Yeah, those are just bridges, so 0 ohm resistors. And then that goes off to the voltage controller up there. Um, so now we're going to pull the CPU, and if the resistance across that circuit goes up to 100 ohms, then we've actually probably just found Dysense right there. Um, the other use for this, um, well, you could trace it all the way back to the voltage controller, and then you can like do feedback mods off of this, which are... Uh, if you do them off of the Dysense, they're kind of sketchy because you're screwing with the... Uh, you're, you're going to screw up like load line and feedback and all kinds of, like you can cause some major, major problems if you uh, modify the voltage this way, but I have not yet run into any, um, but there are also concerns like you can screw up the, wait, I'm doing this the wrong way around. Fun fact, I don't have the Threadripper torque wrench, so I just have to feel it out for if the CPU is tight enough in the socket, and I gotta say, like on my first try, I got it right. Like, I only installed the CPU once, so evidently this socket is, like, either I'm ridiculous, <laughs> either I'm a good replacement for a torque wrench, or, uh, or th this socket isn't really that sensitive to mounting pressure. I'm not really sure. Also, I do have a Lotz socket, not the Foxconn one. Anyway, I think those are gone. Done. Actually, we, d we just need to pop the CPU. Well... Like, we just need the CPU not connected to V-Core, so... 
I'm not sure if I have to pull... Well, I'll, I'll pull it out all the way. Better. There we go. Man, that is... I, I forgot that it springs up like that. Anyway, this is actually the first time I'm running, a, like, working with any Threadripper stuff. So, there we go. CPU is out of the system. Now we're just going to close this again. Wait. Oh. Just going to close it. I'm just going to do the top one only. Because I, I need it to, like, I don't want to flip the board over with this open. I'm going to secure it, yeah. But hopefully I don't get thermal paste on the pins. That would suck. Anyway, so we flip it over, and now we just take the same measurement again. And uh, if, it, if it now measures 100 ohms, then, well, I'm just going to hook up the oscilloscope to that, and that's where we're going to get our voltage readings from. And it's going to be extremely accurate. And you might be like, wait, why are you going this far? And it's just, so, yeah, now if we measure across V-core, yeah, so it's 100 ohms. I was right. Um, well, it's easy to be right when you have multiple guesses, isn't it? So we're just charging up, like, the capacitors right now. So it's never, I, I don't think it's ever going to reach 100. So, yeah, but, okay. So you can see how if you remove the CPU, the resistance of the CPU is really low. It's not like the board that's really low resistance. So, anyway, now if we measure across that lovely little circuit down there, we should see the same thing. And if it doesn't, if we do see the same thing, yeah, which we do. I am like 99. Damn it. Multimeter too smart. Um, so here's the thing, though. If we measure from one side of this to the... Okay, so that... Hmm. Okay, so that's a problem. Okay, let's try from this side. Okay, that's 100 ohms. See, so this is what I was saying. Okay, wait. That's 100 ohms. And this is zero. So now I don't know which side goes to the actual controller, which is annoying. That's zero. All right, so now, now <laughs> wait, I've confused myself. So we have, right, so what's the resistance of that? Re no, because there's going to be a, that's a zero ohm resistor. That side, from this side. Wait a minute. Oh, right, I'm a moron. Right, so because if you have the CPU installed, everything is in parallel through the CPU, so obviously, like, originally when I was measuring these resistors, I was like, oh yeah, this is a 2 ohm resistor, and it's like, no, that, that's not Buildzoid, that ain't no freaking 2 ohm resistor, you moron. That's a 100 ohm resistor, and that is another 100 ohm resistor. So now it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, that's another 100 ohm resistor. Um, so now the question is, because here's the thing, this has vias going into the board. Um, so now the question is, which of those vias goes actually to the controller? Um, because that, that is rather, well, actually, it probably doesn't matter that much. Because, eh, yeah, that actually probably doesn't matter that much, because that is a zero ohm resistor, so I can measure from either side of that. So, anyway, so, yeah, so I can actually, on, so, bleh, we zoom in again. So this probably isn't making a whole lot of sense. Unfortunately. Come on, camera. You can do it. I believe in you. You're a great camera. You're an amazing camera. Come on. Hell yeah. See? Encouraging your equipment makes your equipment work better. Um, so basically, so this resistor right here, right, that little resistor, 100 ohms, this side of that resistor is connected to V-Core. Um, the other resistor, this one down here, also 100 ohms, this side is connected to ground of V-Core, which is fine. That's, that's exact. well, connected to ground of the V-Core VRM, but the, the ground everywhere is ground, okay? Like, ground throughout the entire board is, is ground. So uh, it's just like, like, that's a, somewhere in this area, it's, actually, it's probably grounded right through, through the board, like, right, right on the other, because um, there's a little via there, so it's probably grounded right there, um, like, as soon as it goes through the board. Um, anyway, but this side, right now, 
right? If we measure across this side right now, we see 200 ohms. If we measure like this. That measures 200 ohms because we go, that measurement goes through, it goes through this resistor, then through this resistor, through the V-core power plane, and then through the top one, right? Because 100 plus 100, 200, and then it goes around, and that's our V-core resistance. So if we actually measure on, this, like on either side of these, we should be getting the, the die sense voltage, because that's the, those are the 200 ohm resistors to basically m disconnect V, oh well, um, like the, basically there's going to be so much voltage drop across those when the CPU is, like the voltage is going to drop across those when the CPU is installed, so that's the point of them. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's that, that's the die sense right there. So now I'm just going to take a Sharpie and uh, point that out for myself, and hopefully that made some amount of sense to you. Because um, here's the thing, like at this point, I'm, I'm not still like 110% certain that I got the right circuit. I'm never 110% certain about anything, because I have <laughs> like I have no self-confidence. So it's even when I when I'm like, yeah, this this is probably what I like. Like I'm still gonna solder to this. Like I'm still gonna measure. I'm I'm still gonna try. Uh, take my measurements off of those off of those resistors. That doesn't mean I'm a hundred percent certain. I'm gonna drop a comment under the video uh, if I'm actually correct about this. Um, and if I'm wrong about this, actually no, it's simpler. If I upload this, then I was correct. Those are the correct like that. That is the right. Uh, th those two resistors. So like uh, this guy right here and this guy. Those two are the, the die sense resistors, and if you measure on either side of them, you're going to get die sense. So I'm just going to give myself a little die. Perfect. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's an awful E. Anyway, um, I, I've done the same thing. I've done this exact same thing for my ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX. Um, you, I also wanted to do this to my Z390 Dark, but the Z390 Dark is far too... Like the thing is, I have that board plasti dip, so I'd have to break the like I'd have to break through the plasti dip, and then then it gets all peely, and it like you can't really fix it after it starts peeling. So um, I don't really want to deal with that. So anyway, that's the die sense probably. So I'm gonna go do some soldering, and uh, if you see this video, then I was right. If you don't see this video, then I was wrong, and you won't know about it. Um, and yeah, actually, I'm probably also gonna, like, actually, I want to also have the oscilloscope hooked up to that, um, eventually. Um, which I'll probably just do, like, a, a little, just use a passive probe, not coax directly to that, because that should work just fine. The thing is, when I'm using the passive probe, like, the main concern is that if you, like, the reason, like, basically it has a tendency to pick up switching noise from the VRM. That's the main concern, so... Yeah, but I like we're on the back of the board. All of the switching elements are behind a ground plane, so they should be shield like there there should be at least one ground plane between this side of the board and all of the actual switching stuff. So we like on this side of the board it should be relatively quiet in the VRM area. On the flip on the other side by the inductor is horrible. You try to measure anything anywhere, you try to measure anything anywhere near the inductors and you're going to pick up inductors like you're going to pick up the switching noise from the VRM. Um, which is super annoying. Um, so, yeah, hooray for Dysense. Um, like, that should be Dysense. And the, the, the funny thing is, is, like, I actually have no accurate software voltage readings on this motherboard right now. And, well, I, I don't like dealing with software not working properly. So this is my best solution to it, is just like, well, if the software doesn't want to be cooperative, I'm just going to measure it from... From the freaking dot, like I'm just gonna measure it from right here. So, yeah. Anyway, that that's it. That's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, um, then uh, you can support me by uh, uh, donating to me through Patreon. Down in there's a link to that down in the description below. And then. Uh, you can also uh, buy some AHOC merch, so like shirts, stickers, posters, that kind of thing. You can find a link to that down in the description below as well. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and goodbye. I'm hitting the stop button now.